Hi, students often ask me in seated forward folds like Paschimottanasana, should I flex my feet or not? So in this video, I'll look at the anatomy of the legs to try to answer that question. I'm Joe, I make videos about yoga, fitness, anatomy, physiology, and movement science to help you understand how your body moves and also how it can move better. So should you flex your feet in seated forward folds or not? The short answer to that question is there's not one right answer. But whether you point your feet or flex your feet in the pose will make a difference because everything in your body is tied together. There's no one part that moves in isolation from the other parts. Okay, so let's jump a little bit more deeply into the anatomy of the legs in this pose. The Sanskrit name for this pose, Paschimottanasana, translates to the intense stretch of the back side of the body, sometimes translated as the west side of the body, which means the back side of the body. So that means that all of the tissues along the full length of the back side of the body, from the feet, all the way up the backs of the legs, along your back, all the way up to your head, all of those tissues are being lengthened in this pose. And in general, I think that's a good way to think about this pose. To think about it as an elongation of the entire back side of the body, so that the action is distributed through the entire body rather than being localized into one particular place. So the back side of the body in this case actually would start with the soles of the feet. There's a layer of thick, tough connector tissue in the soles of the feet called the plantar fascia that runs from the toes to the heels. We could connect from there uh, through the Achilles tendon, the tendon of the calf muscles, to the calf muscles. One of them, the gastrocnemius, crosses the knee joint, so it attaches to the thigh bone above the knee. If your knee is bent, um, you break that continuity but if the knee is straight, we could continue that line of pull up along the backs of the thighs, along the hamstrings, to the sitting bones, which are the bottom of the pelvis. Your sacrum is the back of your pelvis. It's also part of your spine. So anything that affects the positioning of your pelvis will also affect the position of your spine. Those muscles are opposed by the muscles on the front of your leg. So that includes the muscles on the front of the shin, particularly one called the tibialis anterior. It runs from the front of your shin, crosses your ankle joint, attaches to the foot around the middle of the inner arch of the foot. It's responsible for flexing your foot. And there's a couple of other muscles in the front of your shin that um, are responsible for curling your toes up. When you flex your foot, all of those muscles are um, being contracted. And when you point your foot, all of those muscles are being pulled on or lengthened. We could trace along those muscles up to the upper part of the shin from there through the tendon of the quadriceps muscle, which attaches to the front of the shin along the front of the thigh. One of the quadriceps muscles called the rectus femoris attaches to the pelvis just above the hip joint. And so if we're pointing the feet, we're creating a pull along that entire line and that pointing of the feet will tend to pull the front of the pelvis forward, tipping the pelvis forward over the thighs. All of these tissues have um, the quality of extensibility, meaning they can lengthen, um, temporarily anyway, if you go slowly and you give them enough time. Um, but they also have a quality of elasticity, which is a resistance to stretch, which means that when they're getting stretched, they, they, they fight back, they don't want to be stretched. Um, and that creates a, a tension or a pull within the muscles. So if you are folding forward in this pose and you're flexing your feet, that pull along the back side of your legs is going to be transmitted up to your sitting bones. It'll tend to pull the sitting bones a little bit towards the heels, which would roll the pelvis backward just a little bit. If you're a person who has some restrictions in the tissues of the backs of the legs, the calves or the hamstrings, um, that tension can cause the sitting bones to be pulled under, the pelvis to roll backward, and then the lower back starts to fall backward. When that happens, of course, gravity wants to pull you backward. It can make it very, very difficult for you to even be able to sit upright in this position. So you're kind of fighting against gravity. So one thing you could do if you're in that situation, actually, is to take a blanket and slide the blanket underneath your pelvis. You might find that that makes it a little bit easier for you to tilt your pelvis forward because you don't have to flex in the hips quite as much. But another thing you could do is point your feet forward 
That'll create a little pull up the front of the thighs, which might also make it a little bit easier for you to tilt your pelvis forward. But if you're a person who doesn't have much restriction in the tissues, the backs of the legs, or let's say the place where you feel the restriction in this pose is more uh, in the back muscles, you might find that by pointing your feet, you're moving into areas that are kind of already quite open for you. And you might find that by flexing your feet, rolling the pelvis backward, you might actually be able to create a little bit more sensation of an even lengthening along the entire back side of the body. So what I would suggest is that you play around with this. I think you can feel yourself that if you point your feet and flex your feet, although it might be subtle, if you really pay attention, you'll be able to feel that that does have an effect on your pelvis and it can help you to either tilt your pelvis forward or tilt your pelvis backward. And then you can make a decision based on that idea of creating an even opening along the full back side of the body, what would be better for you. So the takeaway from this is there's not one right answer. Should you flex your feet? Should you not flex your feet? That depends on you and it depends upon what you're trying to get out of the pose. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you'd like to see more videos about yoga, anatomy, physiology, and movement science, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.